Yes, folks, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to Monetary Games and Collectibles. It's yet another action figure review for you to consume and enjoy on the channel today. And as you can see here on my little light box stage, today's installment, we are taking a look at the NECA Dungeons & Dragons Stronghearts Ultimate Action Figure. So stick around, I'm going to give you all the ins and outs, ups and downs as I see them around Strongheart here. So if you've been thinking about picking one up for yourself, then hopefully my thoughts will help you make your mind up. I'm going to be talking through the aesthetic and the visual experience of the character. I'm going to be talking about the articulation and the posability of the character. And I'm going to get into all the accessories and added value and talk about how they've enhanced my manchild playtime over this last couple of days. And with all that said and done, there should be plenty in there for you to be able to soak up, consider, think about, reflect upon, and maybe make a purchase decision of your own. So, let's get that done. But before we move into the review stuff, travel back in time with me, dear viewer, as I share with you now the live unboxing I took of Strongheart when he arrived the other day. So let's do it. Let's travel back in time. All right then, folks. Well, here's the NECA Dungeons & Dragons Strongheart packaging. This guy arrived just today, and I'm now settling down for an evening. And I'm going to get him cracked open for some manchild playtime. So here's the artwork on the front. Lovely bit of dynamic artwork there. I love these, these kind of classic fantasy-style painted pieces of art. Looks really nice, lovely jubbly. Uh, however, NECA does also have the character window. If you open up this little Velcroed flap on the... Uh, Inside cover there, you'll see we've got this little bit of promo artwork of the actual figure rather than painted artwork. And then you can see the, the goods in there, and all the, uh, the the figure and all the goodies. And boy, is he a goodie. Look at him. Uh, what, a, what a shiny, shiny night we've got there. So yeah, that's lovely to see. Very nice. On the back, we've got a bit of character lore there. So some more uh, promotional photos of the figure in action and then a bit of advertising for the Zarek evil orc uh, half orc assassin letting us know that that's also available name and align the character more figure photos on the side name and align character more figure photos on the other side and then a small amount of legal bollocks and malarkey across the bottom right, let's get this bad boy open then i've popped the tape on this underside here so i'll just open that flap and then slide it out there using the plastic blister pack anything else in there got this uh, the backing card is removable as well from the packaging which is a lovely touch uh, so you can use that for uh, some photographs some background displays in your Kallax units whatever you might like to do I'm going to put that one in my little background folder oh plastic tie wraps better get the scissors Folks, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I really, really hate plastic tie wraps and I really hate plastic blister packs, the noise they make while you're manhandling them. I know windowed packaging and plastic packaging is all the rage, but I ain't a fan. Uh, we've also got his cloak through a hole at the back there, but I'm hoping as a soft goods cloak that won't be too bad. But I've done my best to snip all the uh, tie wraps, even the more obscure ones that weren't immediately obvious, but we've got his equipment and stuff there. So there's his shield. And then the uh, weaponry is underneath these little uh, little sort of plasticky clampy things to keep them in place. So we've got his sword, his sheath, his little... Oh, oh, there it is, the knife. Little uh, war hammer. All the swappable hands here. I wonder if I just... Yeah, there you go. All the swappable hands. And then the figure himself... Oh, wow. You see that, folks? The <laughs> head was loose on it. All right, well, let's see if we could remedy that. There we go. Got his head back on. All right, then, folks. Well, there is Strongheart and all his gear. So, as usual, I'm going to go away, have myself some man-child playtime. Also, maybe do a little bit of heating up. <laughs> <laughs> get to grips with the figure, get hands on, you know, pose him up, have some play uh, before I choose to come and share some review thoughts. So uh, I'll be back in a couple of days' time, in my time, uh, to share the review thoughts. So stick around. Future Chris is going to be with you in three, two, one. Okay then, folks, well, let's get started with the first of my review areas, the aesthetic, the visual experience of the figure. Soak strong heart in from head to toe, because I'm sure you'll agree with me. Visually, there's an awful lot to enjoy about this guy. Just look at the overall visual experience, the shelf presence that this shiny, badass knight is just putting out all over the place. He's just spilling shelf presence all over the... Well, all over the shelf, I suppose. <laughs> 
There is an extraordinary amount of sculpted detail in this figure to really give it some texture and depth and bring it to life. I mean, look at the like the metallic paint application effects on the armor there. Got two different shades. You've kind of got the top armor pieces and then the under armor pieces here. The sculpted detail all in the chainmail. Look at that. Let's get right in on that, in fact. Look at that. It's amazing. So well sculpted and the paint applications across the top to put some darkened uh, kind of color into the recesses of the chainmail is just absolutely outstanding there just isn't really uh, anywhere on this guy that hasn't been given just that little extra touch of attention to detail i mean like look at the uh, the feathery flourish on the back of his helmet here it's looking a bit bright under the lights but each of those feathers have got individual sculpted detail in them they've been applied uh, a bit of a wash as well to give them some depth and i just i can't get over it just lovely lovely touches and while i'm here look at the the wings on the side of his helmet there all sculpted in and again nice washes and paint applications of pride to give it just a little bit more texture all the finer sculpted detail of the uh, the the embellishments on his armor here with the the little uh, i don't know what they are like chesty pieces got his uh, his little knight symbol on the front the chain that's holding his cloak to him as i go further down look at the leathery effect on the belt paint application on the buckle each and every one of the little studs and clasps are all painted as well all the way through the blue pieces here just adding a little splash of color in the uh, in the wrist guards on his gauntlets and down here on his little kind of armored skirt piece but there's slightly different colored shades and there's little scratches and marks to show that he's been in combat and jousting and you know out killing dragons and orcs and what have you it's awesome i just honestly i cannot uh, really, I'm just talking because I'm just holding it in front of the camera here in the hope that I'm putting together a nice enough little kind of picture so that you can see all that exceptional sculpted detail and paint application work. And it's it's just really outstanding. I mean, look at these knee guards and his boots. Look at the detail in the boots, just <laughs> blue leathery sh boots. It's amazing. I'm sure you'll have noticed the uh, the lovely shiny blue uh, soft goods cape there. I'm not always the biggest fan of soft goods, but when it's put together well like this, then I have no issues or concerns. Although, as you can see, it's got a few folds in it uh, as a result of the way it was packaged in the blister pack. Uh, this is nicely stitched up the sides. It's got the uh, wiring in it as well to give you a little bit of manipulation there so you can make it mm, play nice. Um, and do some stuff. I was trying to kind of get some very dynamic, like flapping in the wind shots, and the wiring's not quite strong enough to give you, you know, a full lift off the shoulder there. So if you're trying to pose him up leaping off something, then you can't quite get it together there. But it's certainly uh, strong enough to do some kind of basic stuff or kind of give it a little bit of sway uh, and life to it. But it's very well put together. A nice piece of cloth there. And it's got that lovely blue shiny sparkle that works so well with the blues and the silvers in the main body of the figure. I mean, I could just keep rabbiting on and rabbiting on and pointing out bits here and there. You can see uh, there's some element of this review where I'm just like, yeah, stick him in front of the camera because it speaks for itself. I mean, there's not... Uh, there's just not an area on him at all that hasn't been given a little bit of detail and attention. You know what I mean? Just not look like uh, paint applications on all the buckles and here on his uh, on his gauntlet, the the fists, every single one of the hands. I mean, we'll look at the hand swaps in a minute. Um, if anything, I suppose the only area that sort of lets it down a little bit for me is the face sculpt um, because the skin tones and the um, the moustache and the eyebrows are. I don't know, they just look a little bit cartoony compared to the, the kind of reality depths that they've put into the metallic look and feel of the armour. Uh, but I've got to be honest, I've largely been posing him with his uh, with his face shield down because look at that, doesn't that look great? I'm a big fan of that. So when I've had him out on the shelf, I've been, broadly speaking, using him like this. Um, so if there's one area that I'm a little bit mm, not so sure about, it's the face sculpt, but I'm not so bothered because I, I really like that. He just looks proper badass, kind of medieval sword and sorcery knight type dude, doesn't he? Just amazing. So, uh, yeah, Strongheart is a firm thumbs up from me with regards to the aesthetic qualities. I think the visual experience of the figure is absolutely outstanding. There's just nothing I've seen on here that has given me cause for concern or critique. And even the little bit of critique about the face I've got is negligible, really. He is an outstanding looking figure, but you do have that slightly higher price tag. You know, the, he does the uh, NECA Dungeons & Dragons figures move into the into the, into the the 40 quid range and 
and not in the sub 30 quid range. So I think for me extra, you know, when I think about a G.I. Joe Classified or a Marvel Legends or something where I'm dropping sort of 25, yeah, you've got to justify that extra 15 quid. And I think... I would argue they've justified it in the quality of the sculpt there, but that's something to bear in mind. Think about picking one up. The sculpt quality is outstanding, but you are paying a bit of a higher premium. So there we go. Yeah, massive thumbs up on aesthetic quality. As I said before, I can't say much more. I'll just stick him in front of the camera because he speaks for himself. Okay then, folks, we're now into the articulation section. And as is pretty typically the case with Necker, we get the very impressive sculpting detail and the very impressive paint applications and the you know the, the, the you know, soft goods capes and all the fancy kind of statuesque display elements but the articulation isn't quite as exciting as some other lines out on the market right now however it's not entirely limited either so let's get into it so above the shoulders then in the head area we've got a little bit of articulation here on the little plumage the little feathery plumage on the back of his helmet and then, of course, the hinge that I was showing before when I was talking about the aesthetic that brings the uh, the face front down. Then there's a ball at the top of the head and a ball at the bottom of the neck. It's giving us decent down, reasonable up, although obviously somewhat restricted by the helmet, all the way around full 360, and a little bit of tilt and swivel in there, although not a great deal. Again, mostly because of the helmet sculpt uh, rather than limits in the articulation. Then we've got a ball joint here in the shoulder, which gives us a bit of T-shape. And a range of motion forward and back. I'm pretty sure it probably would do a full 360, but this uh, shoulder piece on his uh, on his body armour um, obviously restricts the movement there. There's also a bit of swivel here at the top of the bicep and tricep. Single elbow that gets you up to there, and then it's also got the swivel hinge too, giving you a bit of motion that way. Then a pegged in hand, which gives you a swivel at the wrist, and then a hinge forward and back. And I'll show you all the other hands uh, in a short while, but all of them have got the forward and back hinge like that. Into the torso, we've got uh, some ab articulation there across the diaphragm cut, although a bit limited, just a bit of swivel. Uh, and then there's swivel in the waist as well, which gives you some increased range of motion there. Then it's hip joints underneath the uh, skirt area there. In fact, we can have a little peek under there, look. Uh, so he's got fairly decent splits, but obviously restricted by uh, the armour skirt piece there. And yeah, the forward and back's okay, but again, heavily restricted by the armour piece here. It's a double knee, but it only really gets us up to there. Swivel at the top here. Um, it's not a boot cut though. I don't, can you see that? It's so, um, there's an extra bit of chain mail over the top. So the swivel's not been put in across the top of the boot line, which is a little bit odd. And then we have the hinge and rocker on the ankle on this kind of ball hinge here that you can see. So the articulation is all right. It's certainly not in the pits or anything. There's a, there's enough of a range of motion that you can get some interesting displays out of him. But he's also not up there with the standard of, you know, some of the others. Uh, I suppose the hasbro -y stuff's got a little bit more going on, but it's fine. It's definitely very tight, very crunchy, quite a brittle plastic, which again is, is pretty common for NECA. So some of the early ranges of motion straight out of the packet were uh, a little bit anxiety inducing and he's still quite creaky. I don't know if you can hear that. Still, still quite creaky. I'm not sure you can pick that up on the mic. Um, so uh, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of heat was applied, and even then, it's still a bit rough and tumble. Um, but yeah, overall, it's good enough. It's, it's, it fits the uh, the purpose of the figure because it's it's much more designed to be a display figure, I think, rather than a playtime figure. And so once you kind of found a nice pose, you can get him into it uh, and interact with the accessories, which I'm about to move into, and get something going on. So yeah, I'm going thumbs up on the uh, articulation. It's fine. It's all right. Okay then, folks, well, I'm going to move into the accessories and added value now, and I'm going to begin by taking a look at the wide range of hand swaps that come with the figure. So I've got the clenched fist ones uh, on Strongheart right now, and that's th those have been on him through the duration of the vid, but you can see we've got a, a selection for both the right and the left-hand side um, of differing kind of hand positions that you can use to articulate things like the weapons and the shields that I'm about to show you. So we've got the open palm ones here with the hinge forward and back. And then each side, the left and the right, I've got uh, a grippy hands, two sets of grippy hands. The main distinction of which is the angle of the hinges. So you've got some slightly different uh, hinge angles to sort of suit whatever kind of pose or motion you're trying to get Strongheart to do with his weaponry. Speaking of weaponry, let's start by taking a look at this hammer. Lovely piece of kit here, obviously in this kind of bronze, sort of brassy uh, paint application. It's got the nice wooden handle look on it. Got the, uh, the little wrist and carrier piece there as well. Some knocks and scrapes to show that it's been in action. So that's a lovely piece of weaponry 
uh, to include. Uh, there's no on-figure storage, at least none that I can figure out for that. I was looking for like a hook or something uh, that you can maybe hook that into, which is a bit of a disappointment. I mean, I'm a big fan of on-figure storage for the whole package, but uh, I've definitely had some fun posing them up with this piece for sure. Then we've got his bladed weapons. So here's his, uh, his nice big uh, broadsword inside the sheath. And then he's also got this little dagger here in a secondary sheath that's uh, strapped on. Again, lovely paint application on the sheath itself, giving it a nice leathery vibe. And uh, uh, all the silver, well, it won't be silver, it'll be the steel pieces uh, and the straps and all that. And the blue on the secondary piece with the dagger. Nice metallic color. Uh, color to the blades on the weaponry as well which are really nice the sword i love the sword look at that got those nice bladey contours lovely paint applications got the sculpted handle with the little piece down there very you know good guy uh knight kind of look and feel about it which is lovely this can be stored on the figure so we've got this little loop down here you can see here this little leathery loop there, and it's just a case of sliding the sheath through like so. Just get it over the top of the uh, of the knife there, or the dagger, and just sort of hangs nicely about his person there like that. And then finally, last but not least, we've got this lovely shield in a nice kind of traditional shield shape there. Again, got the, the paint applications, got the core blue uh, to match up with the kind of blue uh, the metallic blue paint scheme on the figure with again the the steel trimmings and the rivets and everything in there a few knocks and scrapes and a little bit of a wash over the steel once again to make it look like it's seen some action and then if we take a look at the other side you can see this lovely wood effect uh, on the underside there with the two straps that you feed his arm through in order for him to hold the shield now, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use one of the grippy hands for this or not, but I've been using these open-palmed ones like this and then just sort of sliding them through like so uh, and then putting the tighter loop just under the thumb line there uh, with the wider loop around the wrist. I don't know if that's the intended manner of using it, but then just with the, uh, with the hinge on the wrist, you can get a nice kind of shield holding uh, position with that loop just under the thumb there like that. So yeah, I love the accessories on Strongheart. Big thumbs up once again. It's it's everything you want in a in a kind of sword and sorcery knight type figure. You want a good, honest piece of sword steel at his side, a nice, honest looking good guy shield, hand swaps to suit the selection, a little bit of uh, secondary weaponry if he needs it. Yeah, it's all it's all good. It's exactly on point. Really opens up the play opportunities, the display opportunities, the, the kind of storytelling piece that you can do with your figure when you put it in display. They, they are definitely added value uh, and as we know uh, things like hand swaps are contributors towards the higher price tag so you're getting a bit more for your money uh, which is never a bad thing right quick figure comparison time then folks and this is the only one i've got for you on this particular video this is strong heart with war duke the only other necker dungeons and dragons figure that i own that i've collected to date uh, but Gosh, damn, look at them. Don't they make a pretty pair? Wonderful. I've had them kind of posed up, jousting against each other. I did a great pose the other day. Oh, in fact, I'm going to try and replicate it now. All right, well, that extra bit of inch height on these guys and the limited size of our little light box stage is not doing that the justice that it looks because it worked. Oh, well, that certainly isn't doing it justice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to leave that there, but you're going to have to trust me. These two look great together, and you can do some wonderful kind of uh, shelf displays with them sword fighting and smashing weapons into each other's shields. It just works wonders and has a great deal of shelf presence. <laughs> there we go. There's the comparison. <laughs> so here we go then, folks. Here is Strongheart making his way round on the turntable. I've been generally posing him on the shelf in these kind of more dynamic action-y poses wherever possible you know mid swing with the sword or uh, holding his shield up or like i said before pairing him up with war duke into something a little bit more competitive although the angle uh, i've ended up not quite doing that justice so yeah lots as you can see lots of opportunity to really get him into something a little bit more dy dynamic a little bit more storytellerish and uh, yeah i think it's it's pretty obvious that through the course of the review, I've been really pleased with him. I think he's a great figure. Uh, got a great shelf presence. I've had a lot of fun with him over the last couple of days and we'll be having many more hours of Manchild playtime fun with him uh, here on in, especially as I 
pick up more of the NECA Dungeons and Dragons line because I'm in, I think. Uh, I'm going to be selective. I'm not going for everything, but I am going to be picking up more bits. Got my eye on that dwarf that they showed off at uh, San Diego Comic Con. So here he is. Yeah, Strongheart. It's a thumbs up. It's a recommends. If you're looking for a little bit of sword and sorcery fantasy in your collection, if you're looking for something with some tremendous sculpting details um, that's got an uh, incredible amount of shelf presence, to quote myself from earlier, I mean, just look at it. He just speaks for himself, doesn't he? I don't, I don't even have to say any more than that. So there we are. Okay, bro. Well, uh, if you found this review useful today, then please do take a moment to head on down and give me a thumbs up, like. And if you're not already subscribed, then why not hit the subscribe button? It means ever so much to me, and it takes you just a second. And it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, it'd be awesome to have you in my little Mod Extra Games and Collectibles viewing community. And while I'm on that note, massive thank you once again to all the regulars who hang around these parts. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you in the comments down below. But otherwise, that's it. I've come to an end. I'm now just vamping in the hope that I can fill enough air until strong heart swivels back round to the front so the video looks great with a really awesome finish with him facing the camera. <sighs> I'm not very really good at this bit, am I? Okay, he's coming back around to the front. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye now.